He shot the first bid off to the client, and now the waiting game begins. The clients are going to take a couple days to review your bid, make sure it's got everything that you guys talked about, make sure it's got everything that the lender is going to require, and make sure that the budget is at least close enough to what they'd like to be paying. As you know, this may take a couple rounds, especially if they're going to be doing any kinds of major edits. If they're going to be uh, upgrading a half bath to a full bath, if they're going to be uh, going with countertops that are quartz as opposed to laminate, any kind of bigger edits that may take a day or two for you to get back to them, you know, this process is going to be some back and forths. They're going to see some new numbers, they're going to see some old numbers, and they're going to eventually work it around with you to make sure that the bid is right. This bid's got to include everything, okay? It's got to include everything, it's got to fit their budget, because once we send it off to the lender, we can't go ask them for more money. There's a little bit of room from a contingency standpoint that we'll talk about later in case unforeseen pop up, but for the most part, if it's not in our original scope of work when we send it to the lender, we will not be able to add it in later. So we want to make sure that that bid looks great. Once you and the client have agreed upon a bid, you're going to have them sign it, and once you have the signed copy, you're going to email that to the client and CC us on it once again. Our email, renovations at makeover-homes.com. You should have this saved by now, but just to reiterate, by sending it to them and sending it to us, we know what's going on. We'll be able to move you to the next stage. And on top of that, we're going to send it to the lender, the HUD consultant, and anybody else who might need it. So again, once you have your final signed bid, that the clients have agreed upon, you're going to email it to the client, email it to us, and we'll send it out to everybody else. Once we have that final bid put together, the majority of lenders, because we work with so many, are going to be asking for a contractor validation packet or your contractor validation documentation. This is going to be more or less the same set of forms that we work with with every lender, but every lender will have their own specific form with more or less the same information on it. So most lenders are going to send us a contractor profile to ask for basic info, a permit profile that asks for what permits are going to be required on the job, a contractor and client contract. This is a contract between you and the client that the bank likes to hold that basically says that the job's going to get done. They're going to need a W-9 from yourself, a proof of insurance from yourself, workman's comp along the way, and any kind of licensing that might be going on in the project. If mold will be handled, we'll need to have a mold certification. If we're going to be painting anything that's lead-based, we'll have to have an LBP. And if we're doing any permitting stuff, electrical, plumbing, or HVAC, we'll have to make sure that we have either your or your subs electrical, plumbing, and HVAC uh, certifications to forward on with this original packet. We're working on coming up with a way to send all of that information for you, but we haven't quite got all the lenders on board yet. So we're on the way and we'll be able to do it at some point. This is a validation packet that, like we said, all lenders ask for and all lenders require sometimes even before the appraisal is ordered. So we are going to gather this information from the lender as soon in this process as possible and get it your way. It's typically only two or three pages, you know, the W-9 and insurance and all that you've already got in line somewhere. So it's typically only a couple, two or three pages. We send it back to the lender and then they make a couple phone calls. That information is similar, very similar to the application that you filled out at the beginning. We asked for references, we asked for all the company detail, we asked for suppliers, we asked for clients. The reason that we're doing that is because we're working on coming up with a way to send that information for you so you don't have to down the road, but we haven't quite got there. So in the meantime, just work with us when we send you that packet. If you could get it filled out and returned to us and the lender as soon as possible, that would be great. You and the client have agreed on a final bid price and the HUD consultant has converted that bid into the SOR. Now it's time for the appraiser to come in and do their job. This is when putting together a very detailed and broken down bid is super important. That appraiser's job is to walk through the home with your bid in their hand and walk through each room and say, okay, what is gonna be done in this room? They're gonna take the current home's status and add your bid on top of that, and that's what they're gonna call the final product. The appraiser's job is to do an appraisal based off of the after renovated value. So the more detail you can put into that scope, the better. The more detail it has, the higher that appraiser is able to value that property, and a higher value 
means more money for you and more money for the client. So it's a win-win for everybody. Assuming that appraisal comes back high enough, and high enough is different in, in some cases, but more or less means that the purchase price of the home plus the renovation costs is equal to or less than that appraised value. So we need that appraised value to be at or higher than the all-in cost to do the project. Assuming that comes back and our numbers are good, we get the clear to close. Once we have a date for our clear to close, this is a good time for you as the contractor to reach out to the lender and ask about a potential material draw. Not all lenders will give a material draw, but some will give anywhere between 10 and up to 50% of the total material costs on that bid at closing. So it behooves you to get a little money, a little starter money in your pocket to get the project started. It's finally closing day. You guys have gone through a lot in order to get to this step, but now it's all worth it. The hard part's done. Getting to the closing table is the hard part of these projects. Once you actually get to start the project, you do what you do best. Put on your tool pouch and get it knocked out. One quick note, upon closing day, you have 30 days to get the project started. So we recommend that a day or two before closing, you get with your client and put together a, a schedule of some kind, a start date, maybe get some materials ordered, and figure out how that project's gonna lay out. Like we said, this was the hard part. A lot of steps go into getting us to closing day. So if you follow our lead, put together the proper bid, put together the right information, talk to the client, all of the above, we're gonna get you guys to closing day as fast as we can. Then the fun part gets to happen. You get to knock more projects out and put some more money in your pocket. That's what it's all about.